Have you noticed, are there tensions between uh, Beatrice and Eugenie? So um, that's what the video will be about. So um, I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on. For whatever reason, some people believe that there may be, um, you know, some some honest, uh, uh, tense uh, relationships between uh, Beatrice and Eugenie. So, um, you know, that's what the, the draw will be about. So let's see what the cards have to say about that. So, in 1988, Princess Beatrice was born at the Portland uh, Hospital on the 8th of August. So she's a Leo. And she is the first child of the Duke and Duchess of York and the fifth grandchild of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. Um, now in 1990, Eugenie Victoria Helena was born by cesarean section at Portland Hospital on the 23rd of March, so she is an Aries, and the second child of the Duke and Duchess, and uh, the sixth, <laughs> sixth uh, grandchild of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. They finally named her on the 30th of March. Now Beatrice was baptized in the Chapel Royal at St. James Place. Her name was not announced until two weeks after her birth. Then Eugenie had been baptized at St. Mary uh, Magdalene Church, Sandringham, uh, the first royal to have a public christening and the only of the Queen's grandchildren not baptized in the lily font. Uh, the princess's parents divorced amicably when they were six and seven, and the Duke and Duchess agreed to joint uh, custody. Now, in 1991, Beatrice's early education was at the independent Upton House School in Windsor. In 1992, Eugenie began school at uh, Winkfield Montessori, then joined Beatrice at Upton uh, House School. Uh, 1995, seven-year-old Beatrice is diagnosed with dyslexia. And both girls attended the independent uh, Coeth Park School and St. George's School near Windsor, Windsor Castle. Eugenie boarded at Marlborough College in Wilshire. And uh, 2002, 12-year-old Eugenie had back surgery at uh, Royal National Orthopedic Hospital in London to correct scoliosis, a condition that I uh, have also. Uh, there were two 30 millimeter, which is 12 inches, titanium rods were put into her back and she fully recovered and no further uh, surgeries were needed. 2006, Beatrice, uh, on her 18th birthday, uh, she celebrated that with a masked ball at Windsor Castle. And she briefly dated American Paolo Liuzzi, Liuzzi, Liuzzo, I'm sorry. And uh, previously, uh, he had been previously charged with assault and battery. Uh, then for 10 years until 2016, she dated Virgin Galactic businessman Dave Clark. In 2008, Eugenie took a, took a gap year, and Beatrice was a sales assistant at Selfridges and worked at the Foreign Office's press office with no salary. Uh, plus, she started a three-year course for a uh, BA in History and History of the Ideas, History of Ideas at Goldsmiths University of London, and she graduated in 2011. Now, in 2009, Eugenie studied art history, English lit literature and politics at Newcastle University, she finished in 2012. Now, Beatrice is the first royal to appear in a non-documentary film with a small non-speaking uh, extra role in uh, The Young Victoria. 2011, uh, Eugenie lost her taxpayer-funded police security. 2013, she moved to New York City for one year as a benefit auctions manager for the online auction firm Paddle 8. 2014, Beatrice was a paid intern at Sony Pictures, but uh, resigned after a hacking uh, incident that affected Sony. You may remember that was in the papers. 2015, Beatrice moved to New York City. Eugenie moved back to London, working for the Hauser and Worth Art Gallery as an associate director and was promoted to director in 2017. Now, Beatrice had a full-time job and split time between London and New York City, and she's professionally known as Beatrice York. Uh, and is the Vice President of Partnerships and Strategy at Affinity and also in charge of a program to engage senior business chiefs worldwide uh, supporting women uh, in leadership. 2018, the engagement of Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank. They had dated for seven years and moved from St. James Palace to Ivy Cottage, Kissingham Palace. The wedding was at St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. The wedding dress was by British fashion designers and displayed her surgical scar to honor those who helped her and inspire others with 
scoliosis. Then uh, 2019, Beatrice attended a fundraising event at the National Portrait Gallery, London, with a property developer, Eduardo Mopoli Mosey. I guess that's how it's pronounced. The son of a former British Olympian and descendant of, of Italian nobility. Uh, they were engaged in Italy. Then 2020, Beatrice's wedding was scheduled for the Chapel Royal at St. James's Palace and a private reception in the gardens of, of Buckingham Palace, but both were postponed due to the pandemic. And it was eventually held, the wedding, uh, at the in private, actually, at the Royal Chapel of All Saints Royal Lodge, Windsor. Her wedding dress was a remodeled Norman Hartnell, and the tiara she wore, the Queen Mary fringe tiara, had also been worn by Queen Elizabeth at her own wedding. Uh, both were loaned by the Queen, and Beatrice has a stepson, Christopher Wolf, born in 2016. Uh, he is her uh, husband's Moses child with architect uh, Dara Wong. Now, 2021, Eugenie gave birth to Auguste Philip Hawk Brooksbank. Uh, at birth, he was 11th in line uh, to the throne and is named after his great grandfather, Prince Philip. Now, Beatrice gave birth then to Sienna Elizabeth Mopoli Mosey, who took 11th in line to the throne, making her slightly older. A cousin now twelfth in line. Okay, so the question is: uh, Are there tensions between Beatrice and Eugenie? I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I'm sure lots of people don't get it quite right, so I don't feel too bad if I've if I've mispronounced it. But um, are there tensions between the sisters? So that's what we want to know right now. Are there tensions? between the two sisters, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie. Princess Beatrice, Princess Eugenie. Are there tensions there? Let's see what kind of answers the cards are ready to give us. So Princess Beatrice and Pe Princess Eugenie are the tensions there. But you know, we have to have a little bit of meditation first. Princess Beatrice and Eugenie are their tensions. Let's just see. Six cards to start. One, two, three, four, five, six. Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie are their tensions there. Okay, first card, signifier, is the hermit interesting card to get for this. So Beatrice and Eugenie are their tensions there. And we get the Hermit as a signifier card. And what is the Hermit all about? Well, he's a major arcana number one. He's pretty far about midway through the uh, fool's journey, give or take. And then, um, but this is the fellow who's careful. He's, um, you know, shining a light on the path forward. He's holding on to his plan, his staff of, uh, of movement before he does make a move forward. So if there are tensions there, this says to me there's a uh, concern there and looking for a way forward. So maybe something. Uh, the challenge to that then is this um, Empress. Well, that's very good. So the Empress Major Arcana, she's the third visit on the Fool's Journey. I hope you can see that number three there. And the Empress is, a you can kind of think of her like Mother Nature, but she's uh, fruitful, she's uh, loving, she's caring. And so the challenge to uh, looking for that step forward, uh, you, the person you want to have on your side, if you're looking uh, what where, where to make that move, is the Empress, who's going to give you good uh, advice uh, with a loving nature. So, uh, so far, if their attention's there, they're um, uh, buffeted uh, by love. The uh, base of this reading then, is the uh, let's see this is the nine of wands okay nine of wands is being bit up a little beat up a little bit okay so this uh, this uh, fella here you can see he's been through a battle it looks like uh, he's holding a plan in his hand he's got several plans that he's gone through it seems and um, so yeah and the this one card is called great strength by the way great strength so. The base of that being great strength looks like this family, Beatrice, Eugenie, and her parents uh, are, are have great strength uh, to move through uh, the battles. The past of this reading then 
is victory, which is the number six. Uh, these are six of wands. And um, so in the past, we've had victories. And we ha have had victories for mostly for the, the daughters. They've been uh, very successful and thoughtful and, and made some good choices regarding their futures. So that's the uh, past of this reading, our victories. In the sky in this reading, are the lovers okay that's beautiful because that's in the sky so this tells me these two sisters love each other okay that's the most important thing uh in the whole consi consideration here and you love seeing that and then the likely outcome of the first part of that about potential tensions between beatrice and eugenie is this king of swords swords are truth justice rules law king being in charge of that and so i'm going to say this king and this isn't a specific person this is a an um ethereal kind of a, a significance this king this wielding this truth justice this rules and this law that is what is going to uh, determine um how these sisters uh, work through if if there's anything to work through now the um final four cards beatrice and eugenie are the tensions there can the cards be more specific and let us know uh, if there are tensions there? Let's see what they tell us. The Oh boy, they don't want to come out. The uh, signifier of that question is this Ace of Wands, a big plan. Okay, So the plan is the key to all of this. This uh, The, the sig significance of this question lays in this big plan. What is the big plan? But what's it in the environment of anyway? That is in the environment of this uh, Ace of Pentacles, value. Um, it's So this Ace of, of Plans, this is very important uh, decision or movement, these plans, very important, is in the environment of value. Where does the value lie? Okay. So that's interesting. So I wonder if this is a situation of the two sisters trying to figure out who's more valuable than the other sister. Or maybe someone else making that judgment and impinging on their um, their thoughts. The hopes and the fears for this whole thing, with whether their attentions, is uh, the Five of, of Swords, which is an abuse of power, and this deck is called Defeat. So, yeah, this makes sense. So the hopes and the fears for this is that these abuses of power that I guess we could say that their father has been involved in, that their mother has been involved in. They don't seem to be, have been involved in that, but that abuse of power is what is the fear of all this. And then the likely outcome as to whether there are tensions between the two is this king of cups, and he's the king of compassion. And just like this king of swords isn't someone in specific, it's the king, the ruler of this truth, this justice, this rules of law. This king is the ruler of the heart. Okay? And that's what's going to win this uh, battle if there are tensions between the two. So we'll go through it again quickly. Are there tensions between Beatrice and Eugenie? And we get the hermit really being careful about moving that plan forward until they've seen a clear path. And it's in the environment of the empress. And so this is uh, the almost the mother figure. Okay? I don't want to say that's Sarah, but the love is what's in the uh, uh, challenge to this uh, moving forward. Um, making sure we have an appropriate dose of that. And with the Empress, you got a big dose of that. The base of this reading is great strength. It's nine of wands, having gone through all this battle and come out with it uh, beat up, but uh, able to go forward. And then the past of this reading uh, talks about the victories uh, with this six of wands that have been in the past. The sky in this reading are the lovers, major arcana, number six. And that's beautiful because this speaks to me of the love between the two sisters. I like that a lot. And then the final outcome of this, as I just mentioned, this king of swords, he is the one who's going to rule. And it's not a person. It's, it's, the, it's the truth. It's the justice. It's the rules. It's the law. That's who's going to rule in West, whether there's um, a dispute between the two. Um, this very signifier of that question comes up with this ace of wands, a big plan, a big wanting to move forward. And that's uh, in the environment of this ace of value. And so then it, we come into play here. Who's more valuable of the two sisters? The um, hopes and the fears of this uh, all hinges on this five of swords, truth, justice, rules, law having been abused. Okay, that's the fear. But then the likely outcome of the whole thing is the king comes back again, but this time with a cup of compassion and saying, this is what you'll use to make your decisions, this cup of compassion. So uh, I would say if there are tensions between the two uh, sisters, the love uh, they have for each other and hopefully some skilled guidance is what's going to bring them through it. 
as always, I can never predict, as it were, uh, what the cards are going to say. I can only read the outcomes and uh, hope they um, uh, are honest and, and meaningful. So uh, I hope that's what happened. And uh, let me know what you think. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is the Heaven and Earth Tarot by Jack Sifroth and Jamie Elford. And uh, these are Los Scarabio cards. And I got to tell you, these are great. Um, they come in a cool box with that magnetic clip on the side, which I like. The guidebook that there that comes with them is very useful. It's just a full size book that you could uh, sit and have a cup of tea and and read through it. The cards themselves, and it's a color book, which I appreciate. It may not look like these are in color, but this is how the cards are kind of muted with little pops of color here and there. And there's lots of nice suggestions on how you might use these cards uh, in uh, the divinations. And then the cards themselves are, are very nice. The, um, I've not put them in the box well. The little discombobulated uh, here today. Um, I want to spread them out so that you can get a look at them and see kind of what cards look like. And although they're kind of, uh, and in that noir style where they're black and whitish with just some hints of a uh, of very uh, shaded uh, color here and there um, you can see that they're gorgeous cards to use and um, so very nice uh, I do this so that uh, if you don't look at cards very often then you can uh, have a look at almost this whole deck you know because you can stop the tape and really zoom in on some of this stuff if you wanted to and uh, it's a nice way to mix the cards. If you're doing a reading for someone, you could have them uh, spread them out this way to kind of uh, get the cards mixed up. And um, that way, uh, everybody's kind of participating in the process. So that's the Heaven and Earth Tarot. Some cards that I love, love, love using. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come. So, ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.